Johnny here for Johnny's Car Care and Reviews. Tonight we're going to be talking all about automotive news and how it affects Ford. I want to put some perspective on everything, look a bit across multiple brands to help us really understand what's going on with our Ford Rangers, our Ford Mavericks, our F-150s, our Broncos, you know, Broncos at Ice Mountain. What's going on? When are we going to get these machines? Well, it all has to do with chips. So microchips are the main subject of this evening, but we're going to be looking at other automobile manufacturers to help really put some perspective on this. Because of course, as consumers, you know, we call different dealerships. Let's say it's just one or two Ford models that interest you. You call a bunch of dealerships. They all seem to be telling you that, you know, it's going to be X number of months to get a vehicle and you start to think Ford really messed up. Well, let's put some perspective on this. Ford is going through, you know, a lot of delays, but so is everyone. You know, with news articles, sometimes when we're just interested in the Maverick or the Ford Bronco, we only look at news articles specifically for that. And when, well, when we watch the general news every morning on the television or on our phones, well, it's general news. So it's not talking a whole lot about the automotive industry. But I'm Johnny at Johnny's Car Care and Reviews, so I'm here to help. So let's just d dive right in. So Feb in February, Ford cut F-150 production in half. And that sounds like, that sounds pretty awful if you're waiting on an F-150. And I will have tips and tricks on how to get vehicles quicker at the end of the video, so stay tuned to then. But this cutting of F-150 production in half is pretty you know, it's pretty common. We're also going to be talking about uh, vehicles now getting delivered, but with less options. All the security features will be there, but non-essential features might not be working in your vehicle. So is this normal? Is this a complete failure on Ford's part? No, this is completely normal these days. You know, like going, it's like going to only go into the one gas station and you never look at any other gas station. You're going to say, wow, they're charging a crazy amount. They've doubled their price on grass. They're crooks. No, that's every gas station. It's the system that's, you know, kind of broken right now. So let's talk about that. Rivian, by the way, cut their production in half. BMW is delivering some vehicles with touch, with no touch screens or non-functioning touch screens. The Cadillac Escalade, when you're paying Escalade money, uh, you know, you're, you're paying a lot of money. That's going up in price. You're escalating a price. Well, no hands-free driving. You're looking at Tesla. Some Teslas have no USB ports. So, in Rivian cutting production in half, everyone's affected by this. This isn't, you know, this isn't just your local gas station hiking up the price, doubling the price. This is a microchip supply issue that's unfortunately everywhere but now for some good ish news ford and gm are working with a company to try to get supply and manufacturing back into the u.s for those microchips so let's just see right now the company that they're working with here is global foundries so that's the chip maker, Global Foundries. They broke away from AMD in 2009 and Ford and GM are working to get plants back here. Mind you, this is good and bad news because it's great. It's great news that they're trying to get plants back here to secure us some microchips because this is about, you know, our safety. We need microchips for all sorts of things and it's going to take, this doesn't get done overnight. This could take up, upwards of even up to 10 years apparently but ford and gm have announced and this is ford's vp of vehicle embedded software and controls chuck gray who actually it's he told the wall street journal that they're looking um to this company so they're going to be working together and hopefully this helps move things along the whole goal is to you know as they said to advance semiconductor manufacturing and technology devel development within the united states without committing to building any plants uh well and then the wall street journal goes on that they haven't committed to building any plants right now but it's it's so great to see a very high up at ford looking to resolve this for the long term. So yeah, it, this isn't just affecting Ford, but Ford is working on a solution. Now, what other solutions have they found in the, you know, right now? Well, first of all, the Ford Explorer, different vehicles are gonna be 
getting delivered with less functions. We've already seen it on the Bronco. You know my 2021 Bronco? I've got the little temperature showing on my dials in the bottom and now 2022 Broncos. You only see the temperature up top. It's not showing at the bottom. So they're gonna, vehicles are gonna have less functions. Specifically, the Ford Explorer, second row controls for heating. Well, those controls aren't gonna be there. Now heating will still get piped to the back, so don't worry. The kitties or doggy doggos aren't gonna freeze, but those options are gonna be later installed by your dealer. Ford saying within uh, le within less than a year, I'm thinking probably the goals probably six to nine months. They'll get it done as fast as they possibly can, but that's what's going on right now. And you know, a big help to get your vehicle faster is you, if you remove certain things. And a big one is auto start stop so that your vehicle uses less microchips. I'm gonna go through what the codes are based on the vehicle. So if you have an F-150, uh, remove, put option code is 52X to remove the auto start stop option. If it's a Ranger, it's 51D. If it's an Explorer, it's 52X. And if you have an Expedition to remove the auto start stop option, you'll want to have the 52L option selected. So that's how you're going to get rid of auto start stop and it will help move your things along. Now, no surprise, certain vehicles won't get built if they, I guess, have too many microchips. So an example, the 2022 Nautilus stock orders with ultra comfort seats aren't going to get scheduled this program, meaning everyone should know get your get your nautilus faster remove the ultra comfort seats now what else for other movie b models you got the super duty uh this isn't microchip related obviously but removing the spray and bed liner which now you can even remove it from the black appearance package you can remove that spray and bed liner so really good idea to get your uh, Super Duty faster. Now that's true for the Maverick, F-150, General, any truck, get the spray and bed liner and really get any accessories. Don't take any chances. Get the accessories done at the dealer. You might pay a few dollars more, but it's going to help get your vehicle, you know, why up the risk of having a delay that, hey, you know, it could add two, it could add two weeks, but it could also add two months or even more. Now on the Nautilus, if you are looking at something like the DVD kit in the seats, you remove that, you're probably going to get built sooner because it's on. It's a balance out option. So you can already see that there's limited supply of this. Really, if you can think that something you don't really want or didn't quite need and it requires you know, all added electronics, microchips, you can consider removing it. Now, for the Maverick, a tough one is the Co-Pilot 360 because that system's just great. When I'm backing out of Costco, uh, my Bronco, uh, if I would've had my old Bronco, I could've ruined it. Thank goodness I already had my, my, my Bronco, not Marie's Bronco, and it's really useful. Driving out of the driveway every day, people speed by at 50 kilometers an hour, uh, they're hard to see. So Copilot, oh, it's a hard one. Luxury package, the question is, can you live without the heated seats? Now, Marie in about minus eight to minus 10 degrees Celsius. So a good amount below freezing. We're on the cloth XLT seats with no heated seats and we had no issues whatsoever. We never felt cold. We even did some filming with the window down. So we'll be getting more Maverick drive videos to you soon, but I do wanna just finish covering up the news so Lux package, you can consider taking that off the Maverick. Any truck you're looking at or any model, accessories, think about get, getting those at the dealership, like the roll-up cover, the, the, the bed covers, the whether it's a plastic drop-in or a spray-in drop-in. And it hasn't been talked about by Ford, but I've noticed in the system that 4K package, which it makes sense, more microchips because you've got the seven pin which controls brakes and uh, sway control for your trailer. Well, saw a major delay on an order and it made no sense because, well, no sense. The only way I can make sense of it when I see an FX4 luxury package XLT go through the system is when, you know, more microchips, but I saw this, and this was like a November order. I saw this June 10th sit back, 
and it had 4K. So I'm really thinking microchips. It's a common theme on the channel, but microchips are a problem. If you can live without the fancier options, fantastic. Now, if you're looking at an Explorer, well, the Explorer, it's the premium technology package that's not gonna be selected for scheduling. So that sounds again like microchips. I hate to sound like a broken record. The Bronco, just keep in mind uh, the percentage uh, of wild tracks has gone up significantly. You know, it was sitting at around 29% um, distribution, and now it's gone up. Sorry, it was at about 14%. It's sitting at 27%. So they were building more wild tracks. The factory is doing everything it can to really match what people want. And hard tops, they've gone up a ton because they used to be sitting right around eight to 10%. And now the factory is able to build what, you know, like in two doors around 35%. And I heard about 53% on four door models. So the great news is hard tops, it's not, no longer a major constraint, but there is backlog. And I've talked about what the backlog means in other videos. So I'm not gonna go through all that and bore you all if you've been following the channel every single video. But this was big. Now let's talk about Broncos though that are stuck at Ice Mountain. It looks like there could be even 4,500 of them. Spring's coming. I've got a really good feeling they're going to start moving because they won't have, you know, two inches of ice or, you know, four or five inches of snow on them. It'd be a lot easier to get the, you know, microchips in them. But will they? Uh, Ford's saying that they're going to be shipping vehicles with less function. So I'm thinking a lot of those parked Broncos were missing some non-essential functions. So what I'm thinking, the microchips they do have are gonna be put in to make sure that those vehicles have all the essential functions so that they're Ford said. They will deliver, they will no longer either have sit in the parking lot or at the dealership. An, an idea way back, I think last summer, was to hold vehicles, send them to the dealership and wait and the dealership would be doing critical installs, but that they had to sit there until the dealership had the microchip. Well, now the good news is Ford's gonna be shipping out these vehicles, but with just a few less functions, meaning you might not know the temperature in the vehicle, or you might only see it in one spot. You might not have certain uh, climate controls for the back seat, like in the case of the Explorer. Some packages aren't available, likely to free up more microchips so that vehicles can at least be deliverable. But that's what's going on with that, with the F-150. Uh, definitely avoid wheel well liners. Uh, onboard scales are available, but only for the XLT 302A and above. And the snowplow prep package is only available for XL models and the XLT 301A. Now, if you're currently looking at an Edge, that's A-OK, -okay, uh, adaptive cruise control. However, if you, it's gonna take, it may take longer to schedule. Now, what is scheduling? That's a kind of a big one. It's pretty important. Uh, so what is scheduling this week? Well, if things go well, Maverick's gonna get scheduled. Some Super, super Duties are gonna get scheduled. What is not scheduling this week? That just means they're gonna be working on things that are already in the system. Well, what's not scheduling this week, meaning they get new dates later on. Not that there, there's not gonna be things built this week. This just means that if you're waiting to get news on a vehicle, you're not gonna get news. Not, it, it is subject to change, it could change, but the plan is you're probably not gonna get any news if you're waiting on an F-150, a Bronco, Bronco Sport, Econoline, Edge, Escape, Expedition, Explorer, Mach-E, Medium Truck, Mustang Ranger, Transit Connect, Aviator, Corsair, Nautilus, and Navigator. So that just means maybe next week you'll get some news, but this week, don't keep refreshing uh, to find out if you've been scheduled for those models, but if you're a Maverick like me, well, you all know the routine. Thursday, we'll be refreshing every every chance we have. So that's what's going on with that. Now, vehicles that are gonna be, you know, only building what is already currently in the system. Meaning, simply put, if you order one now, it's it's almost guaranteed you won't get a 2022. It should be a 2023 model or later, depending on some very rare instances, like the first one here. The 2022 Bronco, if you order one now, 
it's almost certain it won't get built as a 2022 because they're in a balance out phase, meaning uh, the system already has enough orders and they're attributing uh, builds to people who are already waiting, not to new people. If you put in an order now, well, it looks like it'll be a 2023. Same thing for the Expedition, the Ranger, Maverick Gas, Maverick Hybrid, Super Duty, Aviator, Econo Line, uh, the Econo Line 23, <laughs> The 2022 Transit and Connect and the, the the other, the big Transit. So lots of Transits that need to get built. And if you order one now, you're not getting, almost certain you won't get a 2022. But that's the reality these days. Whether you're looking at Ford or you're looking at, you know, if you've been waiting on a Cybertruck, you've been waiting a while. It, a lot of models these days can have, you know, six months. Most models have six months and more. Some models even have a year, two years, even two and a half years before you get your vehicle. Now models, you need to hurry up and go get because soon they're just gonna be focusing on what's already in the system. So there's still time to order up a 2022 Mustang. So do think that, you know, if you're thinking you might not, you, you really like this year's style, well, you wanna go in and order your 2022 Mustang because the 2023, they're changing the style. Escape plugin. Soon enough, it's gonna be you could be you could say sold out or in the balance out phase. It just means that they're gonna build what's in the system, and if you order after that point, it's gonna be a 2023. The Explore, the F-150, that's a big one. The F-150, get your F-150 order in soon. And the Navigator. Now for the 2022 Corsair, something to try to avoid so that you get your order in with less delays would be the technology package, that's code 53B. So if you're building it online, if you can avoid the technology package, just means you should get your Corsair sooner. And I wanna end this video on a really good note. A lot of people really like the idea of a locking front axle on their Bronco. And whereas that used to be in really limited production, meaning that it created a big line because a lot of people wanted it. Not a whole lot could be built because they didn't, I guess, have the parts. Well, now they just have endless parts for that. It's at like 89%. So if you want a locking front axle on your Bronco, I don't see that holding you back. I don't see a hard top holding you back. And well, Wildtrack is improving greatly. So they just got to get through what's already in the system. So I hope this was a really what you could say a Good, good news in the sense that we're putting good perspective on what's really going on out there. Every manufacturer is having issues. Ford's working real hard on getting them resolved. We see it in the distribution of, you know, things that we want on our Broncos. So working a way to get on that, it gives me good faith that on the Maverick, whereas the luxury package has caused delays, they're gonna be working on solutions to get us our luxury packages. Um, and, you know, who knows? Maybe it means we end up, you know, someone will get their Maverick three months earlier than they would have, but, you know, maybe, the heated seats won't be functioning right away. That is very speculative on my part. All we know is that Ford has gone out and say, said at the NADA auto show um, this weekend that they're going to be delivering vehicles, but to speed things up, they're not going to be, you know, when they can avoid having them sit, they're going to be delivering them, but with, you know, a function or two, less functions that are non-safety, critical safety functions delivered. So good news is, Things are going to move, fo move forward and your dealer will call you later on to call you in and say, hey, you know, this option, come on in, let's schedule this up. So now X works on your vehicle. And hey, if I get my Maverick in spring and it doesn't have heated seats, I don't need those heated seats until December anyways. So let's get our Mavericks in. I wish you all a good scheduling week. I, well, I wish you, I've always said, I wish you more cars and more power. Well, let's put the emphasis on more cars. I hope you get scheduled this week. Take care, y'all. Um, if you have questions, leave them, drop them. I'm here to help. I'll do my absolute best to get to them. Take care and have a great week.